Um, again, I'm Jay Owen, City Engineer, City of Reading, here with Terry Ward. This is the uh, the bridge update, a monthly bridge update. We are going to be going to uh, next few months. We're going to be doing it on the second uh, second Wednesday. So plan uh, the next update being uh, June uh, 13th and then July 11th. Correct, Terry? Yeah, Correct. July 11th. June 13th and July 11th at noon here for our bridge updates. So got Nancy in the audience here. Um, I think Patty will be coming from the chamber. I think I see her walking in the door. Probably have some questions. And I think, Terry, you want to jump in and go through your normal process or normal uh, checklist and then show some video and what's going on out there. So Sure. Well, I'll start with safety, and I'm beginning to be like a broken record, but it's a good broken record. So we've... Uh, we still on the project have only had two recordable accidents and no lost work time. So we're real, real happy, real fortunate with that. We want the public, uh, I mentioned last time, we want the public to be mindful of our construction zones and we're working pretty heavily on Bluff Street and in the Third Street area. And uh, you know, so far it's been really good. People kind of stayed their distance of, of things out there. So that's great. We do have a, an OSHA consultation program that we're real happy about where the uh, OSHA staff comes out consultation-wise and, and looks through the job in terms of safety and and uh, works with our team. So we're real happy about that. And then the Zena Tech team has a full-time safety manager too, which is a real important element. So safety is job one for everyone. And so far to date, it's been a real safe project, and we're real happy with that. And Jay and his team, they all get trained, you know, to come out on yep. our job stuff. So, so all of our guys are part of that same safety program, including our utilities and public works guys that have to be out there, you know, working with the, the bridge team to, to get our utilities located, our utilities, uh, you know, tested and, and so forth. So so then on the project, we're on schedule and, and on budget still. The, uh, the river has been up, so we've got some videos of that, but it's coming down. The contractor hopes to get back out on their river operations the, the day after Memorial Day with their drilled shaft operation. So it, uh, again, it's looking much better than it was uh, last week, the, kind of this time last week. Uh, obviously the temporary bridge and button hook have been open. They were open on time. We've had some real favorable comments about the change in traffic. A lot of people like the, 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 the change in traffic and the, the, you know, the much easier to get into the Red Wing and into the downtown area. And, and while there's some traffic issues, the, the general comments that our team has been getting is, you know, there, there was a lot of congestion in the downtown area before, and this button hook seems to have, at least for now, helped that. And we think it'll get even better when we open up that slip ramp coming in as well. The slip people. ramp and then also the, um, the lane drops that have to be done on 61 actually have caused some, some traffic getting to the button hook and stuff. But yeah, the, the reroute of the button hook, I think I've heard some good things about that and, and getting um, it's more it's more with the construction related lane lane issues that we have yep. and maybe go over some of that as well kind of timing and when we can get back to to full lane laneage through 61 there so yep. so the next big milestone is to uh, open up the third between plum and potter by october so again open up third street between plum and potter by october and that'll include the backside access to red wing shoes so the bluff street you know, open that up with the new bridge underneath a slip ramp to the back side of, of Red Ring Shoes by October. New River Bridge opened by October 2019. So that's kind of the, you know, the milestones coming on the schedule there. Traffic wise, the river crossing is open as is. Um, again, the Eisenhower Bridge will keep that open at all times. Uh, in mid-June, we're planning to come with our annual bridge inspection. So that's the MINDA bridge inspection staff that'll come in, in mid-June and do the bridge inspection on the Eisenhower, the, the annual fracture critical inspection. So our team has taken a look out there at the deck and we may want to try and do some deck patching at that time to work it all in. But uh, we'll put out a news release, but again, around mid-June, you can expect some flagging operations out there, at least for a day, if, if not longer, a few okay. days. Potter Crossing of 3rd, we're going to close that periodically for utility work. We have nothing scheduled right now for the closing that, but again, that's the, the Potter Crossing at 3rd. We did shut that down for some removal operations for one day, but we have utility work coming. They're on Bluff Street now. When they get done on Bluff Street, they'll move over to 3rd, to and again, when they go through that Potter intersection there, we'll want to close that down for, for it'll take some time. It'll be, it'll be a number of days when we'll close that that Potter Crossing there. And we'll coordinate with um, which we have been, uh, the businesses along there um, with that uh, Red Wing Shoe uh, and, um, and the 
Knudsen uh, caramels there and stuff. The utility impacts definitely as we're doing that work. So next Monday we'll be doing some flagging at Third and Plum for one day. So Third and Plum was changed to a three-way stop. Obviously, we've taken the permanent signal out of there. The flagging that we want to do, or we're going to plan to do on Monday, is to put a, a, a trench across there, to cut a trench across for some utility conduit, and then we'll start removals on the Liberty side or the west side for the pedestrian ramp work that we have to do. So one day of traffic impacts with flaggers next Monday, and then the rest of the week will be uh, basically open under three-way stop condition but we'll do, be doing sidewalk and pedestrian ramp work on the, I'll call it the west side or the Liberty side there. And then at Highway 61. And, and the, oh, sorry, Terry, the uh, contractor, I believe, uh, was it last week, went out and talked to the area businesses that are actually stopped in, mm -hmm. talked about the work that's happening at 3rd and Plum the, at Liberty and uh, Redmond and kind of here's what we're doing, here's what the flagging is going to be. And, uh, you know, still getting cars through there, but it's... Uh, to, to flag them through and, and, and get the work done that we need to get done. So we've been trying to coordinate and keep everyone posted of what's, gonna, what's up there, so. And we've got a fairly extensive vibration monitoring program to protect the historic buildings, you know, when we get over into that uh, urban area, if you will, in mm -hmm. terms of construction activities. Another thing that we've implemented is on northbound 61 at Plum, a protected left signal. So there's a green arrow for northbound 61 protected left. And um, what that does, however, is for that protected left phasing, that takes up time for the rest of the movements. So now we have to take a step back and analyze the signal operations with that protected left there and see if we need to tweak that signal some more in terms of some of the other movements. So we're hearing from some of the public that uh, Plum Street approaching Maine, there might be some backups occurring there and some challenges there. You know, we'll take a look and, and react as, as need be to try and minimize the impacts of that. <clears throat> Since we got that operational, I have heard good things about getting that protected left, uh, allowing people to get on to Plum Street from the, from the highway there um, with all the traffic heading toward the button hook. It gives them a protected movement to get through. I know it's a short duration, but it, at least we're getting more than, yeah. 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 It's so yeah, that's, but that, like Terry said, that means that time came from somewhere on the signal. So now we're looking at other, other uh, uh, things with signal coordination and timing and so forth. And I know the guys are out there today. As I drove in to, uh, for the meeting, I saw the cabinet open all the way down at Old West Main. MnDOT's traffic engineers are down there uh, working on timing and coordination with the other signals. So. That's a temporary protected left, meaning it's not, it's not permanent as of yet. So what we'll do is once we get the Main River Bridge open with the slip ramp open and traffic dis, you know, distributes itself, and I'll call it the permanent traffic configuration, we'll come back and reanalyze that signal system and see, is a permanent protected left warranted or not? Yeah. It may not be. Mm -hmm. But so just to be clear, that's a temporary protected left from now until next October when we're planning to open up that, that uh, yeah. new river bridge and slip ramp. And then we'll reassess the conditions there. We'll reassess it. It is interesting to note how um, not having the slip ramp really for, forcing everyone to use the button hook and go down through there. Um, the slip ramp is gonna be an important addition to get back open again, to, to come into town uh, from that direction and be able to go south on 58 or into the downtown, so yeah. And we've had some Monday morning quarterbacks say, well, why didn't you put in a protected left to begin with? You, you know, you should have known that yeah. was coming. And, the, you know, the way that works is you, you really do need to have the traffic change then come out and assess the conditions. And before you put in something like that, you know, see if it really does make sense and is warranted. So our, our traffic office did quite a bit of work behind the scenes to, to install that protected left. And then now we're continuing to monitor it. Yeah. So, okay. Construction update then on the Wisconsin side. I, I mentioned the river and the flooding has is, is, uh, impacted us somewhat. Uh, on the approach piers on Wisconsin, we have two more pier caps to finish up. We, uh, we have built the approach fill over there, um, another lift, and that's in a waiting period. We have roughly 10 to 12 more feet to fill to surcharge on the bridge approach over there, and I've got some video or pictures of that. The in-river work is on hold. I mentioned we hope to get going um, right after Labor Day on the drilled shaft operation at Pier 2 with that barge flotilla that's out there. 
Uh, Mud Lake box culvert is on hold because of the DNR fish spawning restriction dates. So about the middle of June, we'll, we'll get back and kick in our construction at the Mud Lake box culvert. So we'll, uh, we're, we're praying for no rain. So we're gonna keep, a, <laughs> keep a, let's, have, let's not have any major thunderstorms in the watershed of the Mississippi. We, we, yeah. we would be, appreciate that. On the Red Wing side, we really have uh, got quite a bit of work on, ongoing in the Red Wing area. So if I start kind of at the river, Pier 1, we, we're, we're, we have the crane bench built there and Coffer Dam, and we're kind of waiting for Pier 2 drill shafts and then they'll move over to Pier 1. The south abutment for the river bridge, we have the footing port and the walls are up on that. We're working quite a bit along the ADM property, you know, in front of their retaining wall. We put the footing and south abutment work we started on the bridge over Highway 61, if you watch that area. We finished up the removal of the existing bridge. That went very well, so we thank the community for their patience for our nighttime yeah. detours. We uh, were into Bluff Street and utility work there, some deep utility water main work that we're doing and, and some contamination from uh, remnants of Red Wing years past that was, you know, that was in the, the, the area there. We worked on 3rd Street, took some pavement off of that, and uh, the utilities on 3rd will follow Bluff in a few weeks. And then, like I mentioned, we'll start into the 3rd and Plum intersection uh, next week, Monday. So a lot of work going on on the, the Red Wings. So. Yeah, lots of work, and we're just coordinating, trying to keep people informed. And uh, like I said, the contractor was out meeting with uh, businesses, and it's uh, this is an intensive uh, work this year on the Red Wings side, and uh, the uh, the, our utilities guys and public works guys have been down there working with a contractor and, and helping out. So we appreciate that and appreciate the patience of the businesses that are impacted on the Red Wing side here. So I'll let Terry show some video now. Here we yeah, go. I thought I'd start with a picture of kind of the before we started. It was pulled this up the other day and I thought it was kind of fun. So if you look, you know, you can see one of the buildings that we took down. You can kind of see a little bit of the top of the uh, you know, Red Wing public a maintenance facility there and then on uh, the ADM side in front of the campus all the trees that we've taken out and the temporary bridge that's in there to the right and so there's been a lot of changes already in terms of the landscape of Red Wing from from the bridge project so there's some videos on the bridge work on the project so this is the barge flotilla we've got some, the casings out there for the drilled shafts part of the operations they assembled quite a quite a flotilla of barges there for that operation, pushed out a, an access, and we're, uh, we were pretty well ready to go and the river came up on us, so we had to kind of regroup, but once the river comes down, we've, we're in pretty good shape there to get that drill shaft operation going. The technique shaft that we did is all accepted and methods all approved, and so we'll, uh, we'll get back at that and get going at that. That's quite, a, quite an operation all in itself. So this one's over on the Red Wing side, you know, kind of in the back of Red Wing shoes, if you will, looking at the the, the temporary bridge there. That's, excuse me, the, the 9103 bridge that was over Highway 61. So this is the re remainder, the last piece of the puzzle. They're, they're working on that old abutment over there, taking that out. So we've obviously, you know, we've closed for three nights and got the rest of that bridge out. We got traffic over on the temporary bridge and now they're over working on the last pieces of of 9103, that, ab that abutment on that side in terms of the removal operations. There's some flooding. So this, this wasn't the, quite the peak of it yet, but it's over our causeway. Contractor was out there still trying to do some work, forming, uh, forming the pier cap on what we call pier three. Or, excuse me, that's pier four. And they were still trying to work with the, the lift there and the, the river coming up. But I think this was the last day they were out there actually able to work with that flooding that came up. Another view of the flooding from the campground area, standing on the causeway, so kind of panning around. Um, working with Bob and Margie over there at the campground. The road was still open, but the water was obviously starting to come up quite a bit into the campground area. So we weren't able to get out on the flotilla. And yeah, it's starting to come up on the access road, you know, through the campground area. 
And here's where we're into, I think was close to the worst of the flooding. So this is over by the north abutment. And the picture I had of the causeway with the man lift, that was done with the, the red pier cap there. So obviously the, water, the water's come up quite a bit. So our causeway, basically we're underwater here. This is, again, close to the worst of the flooding. So panning around, you can, you can see the contractor moved all their equipment up to tr make sure they were high and dry. So it's all packed in by that north <laughs> abutment, all the equipment. So they have to clean everything off from safety perspective and environmental perspective, and, and then we'll move it back in when the river comes back down and then get back on the causeway again. And I thought I'd take a little video over on the, you know, the levee area. People got down there. So again, I think this was close to the worst of the flooding and it almost crested at this point in time. And we wouldn't have been able to work on Pier 1 anyways because as we, as we turn around, the levee road was underwater. Not only the causeway, but the levee road on the Red Wing side. So we really there couldn't, couldn't really get down in there. So we are kind of out of service for a while, no matter what. And I was up on the Eisenhower and I thought I'd just, just a picture of the flooding in the, the, our causeway and our work area in the campground area. Again, I think it was close to the worst, close to the worst of the flooding. Another view of that same area from the backside of Red Wing Shoe. So the, the abutment on the bridge is gone now. They've removed that and shaped that up and got some mulch on there. And then if you look on the uh, on this side, if you will, of Iowa 61, that's the new south abutment for what we call the 34 bridge. So that's the new south abutment of the bridge that'll span, the new bridge that'll span Highway 61. So we're getting some good progress on that structure. And jumping around again, this is back to the causeway. So the f water's coming down. I just took this the other day. You know, the debris and some of those logs are fairly large that came across our causeway there. But again, good news, it's starting to, starting to get to where we can get back into business over there. And we'll move to a little bit of grading work. A few videos of that. So this is over the Bluff Street area, the backside of Red Wing Shoes. They're working on a water main. It actually goes underneath the new bridge that goes to, that serves the backside of Red Wing Shoes. So one of the first things utility-wise they wanted to do was get that water main underneath the area of the bridge that's gonna serve the backside of Red Wing Shoes. And that's why they started in that area. So that'll allow the, the bridge contractor to move forward with that bridge work once they get that water main through there. So it's like a little jigsaw puzzle, the pieces coming together. That same area, you see trench box and equipment and piles of some contaminated material that we need to haul off, piles of what we call clean material. So it's a fairly, you know, fairly elaborate process to just manage the materials that we're running in. And there is, I, I would say, a significant amount of contamination there that we're hitting. Petroleum, you know, you can, you can smell it if you go down in there. So the worker's got to be mindful of safety. And we have an expert on the job that, that manages that material and protects protects the interests of the state of Minnesota in terms of the liability of that contaminated material. And that's the gentleman right there, his name's Tom. He's really, really, really great at what he does and really experienced and he's our manager again of that contamination material process. So he's out there, he can sniff the soil and uh, have a pretty good idea of the contamination. He can take analyticals, uh, do a number of different uh, field tests on that material that he, as, part of, as part of his work. And again, that same area, it's uh, some fairly deep water main for, you know, for Jay and the community that we're, we're working through there on. And they've run into some rock and they've had to um, you know, work at getting some rock out of there. Here's the third and plum. So this is looking at the west side, Liberty's there, and then the opposite side with the, I'll call it the parking lot area over there. That's where we're gonna do some pedestrian ramp and sidewalk work starting next week. And we've already done some saw cuts to, to bring some conduit trenches across. So we'll be flagging that again uh, next Monday, weather permitting, and there'll be some traffic impacts. We'll have it down basically to a single lane going on plum. 
but that's to get those. I'll show that one more time. It's to get conduits across, and you can see if you can look the sockets there that we've already done. A little little trench there that has to come across on both sides. The plan is to get that done in one day. And again, we thank the community for their patience with us. And this is a. The opposite side then, that'll be open next Monday. So as the pedestrian ramps on the Liberty side there are closed, the opposite side will be open for crossing in terms of pedestrians. And you can, there's, the cuts are over there as well. You can start to see the cuts, the saw cuts that we made. And then later on, we'll come back and we'll do the work on the, on the opposite side. I'll we'll call it the east side, but we're not quite ready for that yet. And here's retaining wall seven, which uh, you know part of the new button hook ramp. There's bars coming out the end, so we're not quite done with retaining wall seven. We have some more suctions to go, but they're backfilling behind the portion that they built. So it's, you can see the sand and the granular, and then what I'll call common fill. Uh, the contractor, the bridge contractor, has been doing retaining wall. That's some of the retaining wall forms, and then again the Bluff Street utility type work. So there's a lot of activities going on in that small footprint of area. Try and bring that all together. And again, that same area. So they're over here putting forms together for retaining walls. We got tanks here for, ha for handling contaminated water that we pump out, you know, from our excavations and a number of different backhoes and equipment going on. And this is a picture of the fill over on the uh, Wisconsin approach to the river bridge. So as of today, we're, we're in a two week waiting period to monitor that for settlement. As long as things look good in two weeks, we'll come back and we have 10 to 12 feet of surcharge to still go on there. So I wanna make it clear to people, we're not raising the, the highway or the, uh, the dike, I'll call it. We're not raising it, but we are gonna put a pretty high 10 to 12 foot additional fill on that let it sit for a year, we'll come back and cut that out. There will be a fill at the actual bridge approach and then it'll taper down relatively quick to existing elevations. So we're not raising the highway um, in terms of flood mitigation. So people could get kind of the wrong impression if they see this big fill coming. Just to point that out, and uh, I think that's it, Jay, if we wanna open it up for any questions or? Sure, let's, uh, I've got a Patty and Nancy here. We, I know Patty you th had some questions. Well, we've got several comments about the lane shift from where they have to go, and I might say it wrong, they have to get in the right lane, and then they have to shift from the left lane, and then they have to shift sure. back in the right lane. Okay, so, of questions about that. yeah, um, I'm gonna let Terry t t talk about that. I'll let, uh, Patty mentioned the lane shifting that's happening, basically just uh, near Plum Street there, uh, between Plum and Potter, while you're moving, you're dropping a lane, moving to the right, and then moving back to the left. So I'll let Terry answer that, maybe give us a little bit of update on schedule-wise when that might be changed, or how that, you know, what's coming with that, uh, with that work down there. Yeah, the lane, the lane shift is, is, from a traffic perspective, is really the safest way to do that single lane movement through there. So in theory, if you're gonna drop a right lane, you're pushing all traffic into the high speed lane. So what we're doing there is we're actually taking and moving traffic, all traffic into the right lane first, right. and then into the left lane. And it's, from our team's perspective and the traffic engineers on the project, that's the safest way to do it. Someone could say, well, why are you pushing all traffic into the right and then moving them to the left? Why don't you just put up a left, you know, a, a lane closure, a right lane closure and move them all to the left side? It's not necessarily the safest way to do that from a traffic perspective. In terms of timing of that, we've got a lot of work to do in that area of the new bridge coming across over the top. I showed you the south abutment. We've got to get over and do the north abutment. We've got to set beams. There's a lot of work to do there. So that there will be lane closures and lane shifts in that area for, for a lot of this summer, you know, unfortunately from a driver's perspective. I've heard from some businesses in the area that the, there, there's people that come to the signal, they're on, they're on Highway 61 or Maine, they're headed to Lake City or to Wisconsin, 
they come up to the signal at Plum in two lanes, and the ones on the left are trying to beat the ones on the right to get into the right that's, lane. That's what we've been hearing, yeah. We're going to encourage people not to do that because our, our really only solution, if there is one for that, is to move that taper back, and that gets into the business district and starts to affect more businesses, and we really don't want to do that if we don't have to. But we could, we could move that taper back, and so people, if they come up to that signal, they have to be in one lane at Plum. We could do that. We really don't want to. Okay. I'd like to kind of, um, I was thinking maybe you and I could look at it and, and see if there, I was thinking the same thing. As I've been kind of observing it, I had that idea. Is it better to maybe get that taper back and so it's not all happening one signal and it's right there you get across plum street and you got to get over and we got trucks trying to get over and then there's cars that are yeah. and they're trying to find their way in there so that that is something that i was wondering do we want to kind of get that spread out a little bit to try to give people time to to move over and stuff but so jay and i our team will take a look at it we, again our 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 um, words of wisdom or advice to the community and drivers is Please don't come up to the, the, the left lane and then try and beat traffic and to, mm -hmm. the, to head to get out ahead of someone. That's it's not safe. Um, it, it's not wise, and uh, we'll do. We, we'll maybe put up some additional sign. And we have a pretty good sized sign out there. It says left lane closed ahead. Yeah. Maybe we'll put up another one ahead to, to see. If, but human nature is drivers need to get used to this configuration because it's going to be there for quite a while this summer. So we'll, we'll look at that. And another thing is getting the signals themselves coordinated um, so the traffic's flowing better, which they're working on, will we'll help as well. Yep. Because right now you're kind of hitting a red and then yeah. red. <laughs> it's like they're just not talking to each other, and that's what they're working on right now. So Yeah, there's yep. definitely certain times of day where it, it's backed up, you know, and they're trying to figure out how do we get through here. And sure. Yeah, Patty's mentioning about the certain times of day and the backups that are occurring, and that's definitely something that we're working on with that coordination. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But we'll look at that lane drop and that lane shift as well. And Terry and I can uh, maybe take some time today and go down and take a look at a, some ideas as far as trying to make that a safer, mm -hmm. a safer maneuver for sure. And then some of the backups that, Patty, that we're seeing is Plum Street again coming into Maine. And there, uh, there's always trade-offs, right. and so I've had some people say, "Well, can you put in a right turn lane at Plum, so they, if they want to go south on Main or 61 and head over to Wisconsin, that there's at least a right turn lane to help that traffic movement coming into that intersection?" And we can look at that. The trade-off is you'd have to eliminate quite a few parking spaces. There's always a trade-off. So we'll, you know, we'll work with Jay in the community, and we'll come to what we think is. Is a the best solution, if you will, to that. It may be that there's going to be some afternoon backups there. Yeah. You know that that may be something that um, we, the community and, and we view as the as a scenario that needs to be there because of protecting parking spaces. So we'll look at that as well. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Anything else that and concern? That's been the main things we've been hearing is those backups and okay. you know that lane shifting thing is throwing people off. Okay. They so. just always ask, well, why can't they just keep the one lane? You know, if it's going to be one lane, just keep it one lane all the way through. And it's yep. like, I don't know, but I'll we'll, bring it to the We'll, we'll look at it, and we'll definitely we'll look at that, that, that traffic shifting and, and those backups and see what we can do for sure. I've had some people ask for protected lefts on every signalized intersection on uh, Highway yeah, 61. I've heard that too. Yes. <laughs> and and um, Again, sometimes sometimes you got to be careful what you ask for because right. that really does start to affect the signal operation, the signal yeah. system. Yeah, I, I do think it makes sense where we have got it because now you're trying to turn left on another state highway, and 58 South is a draw for people coming from Wisconsin. It's different than one car waiting on Bush Street to turn left, where we don't want to take the time. Yeah. They can go on on that point when they when when the, the light turns red and, and complete their movement broad and, and bush but plum street i do think it uh, made sense and i've heard good things already about having that in place mm -hmm. so yes that was an improvement okay, okay. anything else nancy anything no? okay. anything at all okay well i just wanted to to remind everyone that we're going to be on on june 13th and july 11th so we're going to stay to the second okay. uh, 
uh, second Wednesdays here, and then we uh, avoid the, the fourth here and give us a little more time, uh, probably get some water comes down and we'll get some more work done before June 13th. You'll have some more video to show. So. Or I'll be grumpy. <laughs> yeah. We need that. Yeah. Yeah. Grumpy. Yes. It's amazing. Yep. All right. So with that, thanks for coming and uh, we'll talk to you next month. Thanks.